This video is about how your child hears with and without hearing aids. At the end of this video, you'll have a better understanding of what your child's hearing loss is like and how technology can help. When parents first find out that their child has a hearing loss, they often feel like they've hit a wall. Most parents feel uninformed, most feel unprepared, and that's normal, but that won't last. The first thing you might have learned is that having a hearing loss usually does not mean you can't hear anything at all. Just like having a vision problem doesn't usually mean you're totally blind. So, how much hearing does a child with a moderate hearing loss have? And how can we best make use of that hearing to develop strong speech and language skills? To describe typical vision, we say someone has 20-20 eyesight. We compare the eyesight being tested with what most people can see at 20 feet. Comparison. Comparing a person's eyesight with what is typical. They have designed this particular chart for that first step. This is the chart that most people have seen. If you have 20-20 or better vision, you probably have never gone on to be shown the more specific eye charts for prescribing eyeglasses. These different charts are step two, personal prescription. These very specific charts are for determining in one person's very specific case which types of lenses will help the most. The right lenses for the right person. The charts people who need glasses see inside this crazy contraption are for helping to prescribe those lenses. Step one, comparison. How different is vision from what most people can see? And step two, personal prescription. What helps in this particular case? This is why the audiologist will show you two different charts representing your child's hearing. The first is for comparison. How different is your child's hearing from what most people can hear? And the second is for prescription. What can we do with technology to best help in your child's particular case? Just like the more specific eye charts are for best fitting eyeglasses, this second chart is best for setting hearing aids. The audiologist sets the hearing aids so that your child has the best chance to hear speech and language. Let's first have a quick look at the HL audiogram. Low frequencies are marked at the left, going to high frequencies on the right. With this chart, soft sounds are marked at the top, going to loud sounds at the bottom, measured in decibels. The water represents everything a person with typical hearing can hear. Above the waterline, sounds are too quiet to hear. At the waterline, they're just loud enough. This line is called the threshold of hearing. Most people can begin to hear soft sounds when they are this loud. Between 0 and 15 decibels is considered typical hearing. Down at the bottom of the chart, sound becomes too loud to be comfortable. Let's say that's the bottom of the ocean. And that's how the HL audiogram is laid out. So the loud, low sound of a dog barking might be charted here. And the louder sound of a lawnmower here. Where are the sounds of speech? At three feet away, they are loud enough to fit inside this submarine shape. There is speech to be heard at low, mid, and high frequencies. When a child's hearing is tested, the audiologist searches for the level at which that child just begins to hear sound. In this example, the child's hearing threshold is here at the new water line. Above this line, sounds are not heard. The name for this degree of hearing loss is moderate. You can see that for a child with this degree of hearing loss, many of the sounds of speech are above the waterline and so will not be heard. Sometimes parents of a child with this degree of hearing loss are fooled into thinking the child doesn't need their hearing aids because they do seem to respond to voice, or they turn to a louder sound like a dog barking. By looking at this waterline, we can appreciate just how much of the speech signal they are missing. The HL audiogram is for comparison. Knowing how the hearing loss compares to typical hearing helps us to estimate its impact on hearing speech and language. Now that we have our HL audiogram results, let's move on to the other audiogram, called the SPLogram, which is for creating a personal prescription for setting hearing aids. 
For this audiogram, frequencies are still organized from low on the left towards higher frequencies on the right. For loudness, though, the SBLogram is flipped, with soft sounds at the bottom going up to loud sounds at the top. Also, you should know, the decibels used here are defined a little different than those used on the other audiogram. They are based on specific units of sound pressure, and this is so that the audiologist can more finely tune the settings on the hearing aids. This is the level at which most people just begin to hear soft sound across the frequencies. Let's say where most people start to hear the softest sounds is at ground level. People can't typically hear what happens below this line, so on the SBLogram, this is the threshold of hearing and the sky is what is heard, going from soft sounds like rustling leaves to louder sounds like a dog barking or the lawnmower. We will say that loud sounds that are too loud begin at the sky space line. The audiologist can set the hearing aids to never make sounds loud enough to go above this line. Now the audiologist needs to consider where speech usually is. This is where average speech usually happens. Your speech will be softer and louder at times, and someone else in your family might speak softer or louder as well. Since speech varies in loudness, some sounds are louder up at this line, and some are softer down at this line. The audiologist wants your child to hear all of it. The audiologist will take the levels from step one, the HL audiogram, and convert the numbers to this chart, the SBLogram. Remember that the decibels are different, so that's why the numbers taken from the HL audiogram testing will look a little different here. This is how a child's hearing with a moderate hearing loss might look on this SBLogram. We'll put clouds over the lower part. A child with this hearing loss can only hear sounds that are loud enough to get over the clouds. You can see how soft speech will not be heard and how for average and even loud speech the mid and high frequency sounds would not be heard. The audiologist uses this information to set hearing aids to amplify speech to the best possible loudness for this particular child to hear it. Loud speech is amplified to hear well above the child's threshold of hearing. Average and soft speech is amplified here. Technology today allows for very precise fitting of hearing aids to best help with each child's particular hearing loss. Remember, there are two types of audiograms important for understanding usable hearing. The first is the HL audiogram, the submarine audiogram, which tells you how your child's hearing compares to typical hearing. The second is the SBLogram, the sky audiogram, which helps the audiologist to help each child to hear the best. Just like glasses are sometimes necessary for understanding what you see, hearing aids help a child with hearing loss to hear what is most important for their overall development. Speech and language spoken by the people who love them. Remember, when you hear well, the sky is the limit.